Everybody keeps asking, what's the secret? What's the secret? There's a lot of secrets, and I'm going to go over what my coach back in the 1980s, Bob Gruskin, showed me and a lot of the other guys over the years. There's a lot of secrets to a lot of different methods of training. The dieting secrets, the steroid secrets, the training secrets. A lot of different secrets that everybody wants to know. Everyone's so used to, well, I read this in the magazine, which was back in the day, or I just read this on the internet, or I saw this in the video, and this guy said this, and this guy said that. Well, I don't give a shit what those people have to say. I really don't, because I learned it from the master trainer himself back in the 1980s, and he coached nothing but champions. So if you want to know the secrets that I was learned, or the secrets that were taught to me, I'm going to give you some of those secrets that have to do with training, diet, and yes, that hateful word, steroids. I'm going to give you some secrets coming up right after this. So I met Bob Gruskin when I was 16 years old at one of my first teenage competitions. I took dead last. It is what it is. Happens to a lot of guys. But Bob gave me some really good advice and he told me, don't be discouraged. Just keep training, watch your diet. Well, 16 to 17, my body had very few changes. I was a late bloomer. But with his guidance, by the time I was 18 years old, I was placing and winning a lot of teenage competitions back in the day, back in the 80s. When I went full steam ahead with Bob at, say, like that 18 to 19 year old range, by the time I was 20 years old, I was competing in men's open competition and I won the Mr. East Coast at 20 and placed second in the collegiate nationals against Todd King, who's Jeff King, Mr. America, 1983, his younger brother, who's the same age as me. So Bob had taken my training and my physique to that next level at a very young age. And I'm going to tell you how he did it, not just with me, but with a lot of the guys. And the first secret that I mentioned was training. Training is everything along with diet, but training is where it really counts. As a young kid, you read all the magazines back in the day and had all these routines, three or four sets, six to eight reps and all this. And I trained it because that's what I thought it was supposed to be. So I learned from Bob to find out that's a bunch of horse shit. That's just fucking garbage to fill the space up in the magazines. I was introduced to high rep training, high rep drop sets. And that type of training intensity is what accelerated my muscle growth and took me to levels I never thought I would have achieved at such a young age. That training's no joke. Any of you guys that are following my high rep High rep drop set stuff, realize you are in the friggin' pain zone and you're in that pain zone for quite a period of time and you're getting that skin splitting pump and that's what it's all about when you're training, getting that skin splitting pump. Another important factor I learned from Bob, and Bob used to call me a fat ass once in a while because I used to get kind of chubby in the off season, was even if you're dieting for a competition, it's very important, very crucial, but what you do in your off season is just as important. You can't put on what everyone talks about in the gym with this friggin' bro talk. Oh, I'm gonna put on 30 or 40 pounds over the next six months and I'm gonna lean it out. You're gonna put 30 or 40 pounds of fucking fat on to lean out what? Maybe a pound of muscle growth because of all the shit that you ate? No. Bob was very adamant about the off season diet as much as he was for the contest preparation diet. He didn't like seeing us going above 20 pounds contest weight in our off season. And at first I never understood it because I was brainwashed like so many others. Oh, I got to eat big to get big. Well, yes and no. You got to eat big with the right kind of food to get big. Not eat big of everything you see in fucking sight or order in the left side of the menu twice at McDonald's. That's not going to get you the bigness that you want. It'll get you the fatness that you want, but it ain't going to get you the muscle size that you want. So the only thing that changed from contest dieting to off-season dieting or the bulking 
was the amount of the dieting food that I was eating. I wasn't calorie restricted. I was taking in more calories, sometimes up to 4,000, 4,500 calories a day. And if you thought you were getting a little too heavy too fast, all you did was cut it back a little bit. But I always tried to maintain that 20 pounds over contest weight because this way you can chart your progress by seeing the muscle, not by the layer of fat that you're gonna put on by gorging yourself at the, at the drive-thrus and all the garbage food. Yeah, it is a time and place for the garbage food, but it's not every day, three times a day. It's not that. Getting good quality muscle gains comes from a real good sound nutrition plan off season and on season. Very crucial. So that is one of Bob Gruskin's secrets. Keep the diet clean year round. Have your cheat meal occasionally, but keep the diet clean and don't have this excessive, excessive weight gain. The next secret is the training, the high rep drop set training, never doing the same workout twice. You always want to switch things up. Yes, there's a whole bunch of exercises for all the different body parts. You know what exercises work for you best. You take those exercises and you mix up the order of the exercises. So if you started on, let's say it's a bicep day and you start out with bicep curls and preacher curls and then dumbbell curls, your next workout, start with your dumbbell curls, then go to your bicep barbell curls, or then go to your preacher curls. Mix it up. One workout, let it be a drop set workout. One workout, let it be a high rep workout. One workout, let it be a mixture of high rep workouts and drop set workouts. Never let the muscle get used to doing the same thing over and over again. That's when you hit those training plateaus because you're not challenging the muscle. You're not giving it something different. You need to constantly keep the muscle under confusion. This way, you're going to get those gains and the muscle's not going to know what to expect, okay? Never do the same workout consistently over and over and over again. Change up the exercises. Change up the order of the exercises. Experiment a little with different exercises. See how it feels. But don't just do the exercise. Learn the feel for these exercises. Learn what muscle engagement is. And you're not going to learn muscle engagement by slinging all these heavy weights thinking you're doing something. You got to learn muscle engagement by handling the weight a little bit lighter, sometimes a lot of bit lighter. Learn what the feel of that muscle is, then increase the weight over time. Then you increase the weight and you're able to handle that weight. And you're going to be able to engage the muscle through the entire repetition range. Coming into the gym and just slinging heavy weight isn't going to get you fucking big. It's just the opposite. You don't have to train heavy to get big. I was never a heavy, heavy weightlifter or bodybuilder. I never trained super heavy. I trained super smart. I trained with weights that I can handle for a high number of repetitions. That was my key to my success in getting the muscle gains that I wanted. <clears throat> now the topic I'm sure you've all been waiting for, I mentioned it earlier in the introduction, steroids. What was it like being on steroids when you were working with Bob Gruskin? Well, first of all, I'm going to tell you, Bob had us go into a doctor. We went to a doctor and we were monitored for our steroid use. Our blood work was monitored. We had prescriptions back in the day. Now, this is back in the 1980s. They wrote prescriptions for anabolics. Not all the fancy shit you see coming from all the other countries, but the basic stuff that's uh, manufactured here in the United States. We had prescriptions. Those prescriptions only allowed us to legally get the drugs from the pharmacy. We never used excessive dosages. If you looked at all the Bob Gruskin athletes from back in the day, there were no real, real mass monsters like you see today. I mean, seeing a guy on stage at five foot eight at 265 pounds was unheard of back in the 80s. Really unheard of. You know, Bob guy, you know, Bob's guys were all classic looking physiques, like they were carved out of stone, Greek statue type physiques, very symmetrical, very balanced, very, very conditioned. And that's why we won big championships because of that. 
We did not use a lot of steroids or gear as it's called today. We didn't use that, you know, heavy, heavy dosages. We would use a couple of different compounds and we worked with those compounds. We didn't let the compounds work for us like you see today, the thousands and thousands of milligrams these guys are using. We took very low dosages. It was the training and the diet along with the, the low dosages of anabolics back then that accelerated our training. And any of the guys that stopped training still maintained a pretty good physique because their physiques were not built on anabolic steroids. Not at all. I mean, they're not the magic recipe. They're a tool. Well, let me rephrase that. Back in the day, they were a tool to help you gain some size and, and hold on to your muscle while you were dieting. Today, today's bodybuilding, what I'm not a big fan of, these guys are using excessive, excessive dosages at very young ages. And they're putting on massive amounts of muscle. But today's guys are dying. They're not living long lives. They're dying in their late 20s, sometimes early 20s, in their 30s, in their 40s. There's no reason for that. Anabolic steroids won't kill you. Liver failure, kidney failure from abusing anabolic steroids, that can kill you. Cardiac malfunction because of all the heavy dosages that these guys are using. Not to mention the IGF-1 and the heavy doses of insulin with these massive amounts of complex carbs and sugars these guys are taking in to get that monster muscle mass that you see them carrying. It wasn't like that back in the 80s. That's not what Bob taught us. Bob taught us the smart way and the monitored way to use anabolics safely. I never had any side effects. I never had gyna or bitch tits as you hear it, never. Today, you see a lot of guys with gyno, a lot of guys with you know, bitch tits for the excessive uses of testosterone, for the excessive use of the trenbolones. Wasn't heard of back in the day, wasn't heard of. So I hope I gave you guys a couple of bits of some useful information. Remember, train smarter, not harder. Keep your diet clean, train to failure, get the high reps in and you're gonna make the gains in the gym. Watch my previous videos. Keep your diet clean, and you're gonna make those gains. So until next time, I'll see you guys back in the gym. Peace out.